Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Red Toolhouse. On today's video, we're going to do a six month review of our Norwood LM29 mill and we're also going to make some sawdust at the same time. So, uh, ride along if you will. Well, believe it or not, it has been six months since I started running the mill. I've uh, owned it a little longer than six months. That's because it took me a while to put it together, of course, and uh, there was a two week vacation nestled in that time as well. Now for disclaimer, I am not at this time under any brand obligation or brand deal or sponsorship deal with Norwood. We were in the past, but even when we were in the past, Norwood wanted me to speak frankly and speak clearly as to what I encountered, pros, cons, all that. So, um, so no smoke and mirrors. Obviously we're going to discuss uh, the pros and cons. It's been six months, so we've, uh, we started in October of 2018. And here we are um, wrapping up April 2019. The mill has been in this position since uh, we rolled it out in October. Uh, so you can kind of see I've, I've got leveling blocks underneath it. Uh, I've had to level it, just kind of touch up the leveling a little bit as things settle and as I obviously put heavy stuff on top of it. Well, instead of just standing here by the mill doing a talking head video, I thought as I mill this log, I'll just kind of go through what I consider pros and cons and issues I've run into with this uh, certain mill as we make some two by sixes. So uh, hopefully it won't be as disjointed as it seems to be already since I can't talk and do things at the same time. <laughs> well, first let's go with the overall build. Um, I've talked about this in the other video, um, my initial videos where we talked about putting it all together, so I won't go into it too much again, but <clears throat> is the build solid? Yes. I would say that uh, all in all I've been impressed with the support, the weight. Um, the bed really is, it's, it's kind of almost over-engineered. It's just, it's very, very sturdy, very heavy. Uh, it definitely can handle heavy logs. It uh, doesn't bow. There's no, the only swaying I get is because I've got it jacked up so high. Um, and I could obviously do a better job leveling it. I don't even have the tires touching the ground, which Norwood suggests have the tires on the ground to add additional stability. But my uh, my setup here is so, um, so uneven that I've got these back jacks as low as they'll go. And the front jacks, of course, to keep it level have come up so high. So that brings the tires off the ground. So if I'd come in and prepare a better pad, then we'd be all right. But you know, one thing that's important to point out about this is the build of this mill is as good as the assembly. So again, this thing comes in a, in a, on a pallet. It comes in a bunch of broken down uh, boxes. Well, the boxes aren't broken down. It comes in a broken down in a bunch of boxes. So some assembly is required and uh, that takes a bit of time. So. While it's not impossible for a novice to do, it is hard work, and if you make mistakes putting together or you cut corners putting together, then that's going to show up in your mill quality. It's going to show up in how well the thing holds together. It's going to reveal itself, obviously, as you run the mill. If you've put it together poorly, uh, you skipped some steps, you left some parts out, or you didn't tighten things down. So uh, sometimes I hear I hear or read people grumbling about their Norwood and they talk about specific things and I'm like in my experience yeah I know exactly why you're having that issue you didn't put it together right but but that's we'll get into some other things here too one of the most common questions I've been getting uh, since doing videos on this mill is what do I think about the Kohler engine and with the pull start without electric start is it easy to start and <laughs> yes yes it is I've been I've been very happy with the Kohler uh, the fact that I had a Lumbermate 2000 18 years ago, I, in my mind, I'm comparing it against that, and it had electric start. So I was a little discouraged when I first got this and thought, nah, it's not going to have electric start. I'm going to end up pulling my guts out in the middle of winter, all that type of stuff. But, you know, we've gone our first West Virginia winter with the mill. Granted, West Virginia winters aren't crazy like some of you guys have further up north. But we definitely had some cold snaps. And the crazy thing about West Virginia, we have warm, cold, warm, cold. So it's the type of thing that can wreak havoc on your carburetor but just to show and again we'll see if I uh, end up putting my money where my mouth is or regret what I'm saying I have not started this mill yet the mill has not run for 
10 days maybe. I haven't run the mill in about 10 days. So I'm going to start it. It's completely cold. I'm not going to do any editing out here. I'm just going to start it. So we'll see how many times it takes me to pull start it here. <laughs> Turn the gas on. Choke it. I'm going to lower it a little bit. Just so it's ergonomically appropriate. There we go. So that was obviously one pull. Again, didn't prime it. There's there's just the choke, the on and off switch, and then of course the throttle. So we're up to idle there in one pull. So very happy with the Kohler command so far. Again, six months old, we'll see two years, three years, five years down the road if we still have that success. But so far, I like it. Hopefully this engine noise isn't too loud that I can't uh, talk over it because I want to keep starting and stopping. So this first pass is kind of a perfect example. I don't know if it was showing up on the camera, but it's kind of a good example of my first con or first issue that I would say I have. Let me walk off camera unprofessionally here. We'll swing around to the other side. The sawdust port on this, and I know why they do it, obviously, it, it's to take care of all the safety sallies there. We'll go ahead and turn it off. So, I don't know if you saw or not there, but the sawdust just stopped coming out. And granted, you may say, well, dummy, you obviously didn't clear it from the last time you used it. And you would be correct. But really don't like having to do that every time that after what I've noticed is after a log or two the net port is getting clogged so much that I have to uh, I have to stop and, and clear it out more frequently than I have to change the blade so you can see now again the last time I ran it I didn't clear it out so I'm compounding the issue even more so this port just has four holes in it that this sawdust is supposed to fly through. But you're also introducing all this wet sawdust because you've got your, if you've got your water on, your lubrication system on, then of course you've got a lot of wet sawdust coming into the mill. So that, those ports clog up pretty quickly. And I know a lot of you guys have commented already hey Troy just cut those cut those holes out and make it one big opening yeah on my uh, Lumbermate 2000 it didn't have a plastic case in the holes it just had like a uh, wire mesh almost like a hardware cloth looking gig and that's the first thing we did we took wire cutters and cut that out for the same reason again I understand why Norwood does it you got a big hole like that where there's a lot of 
a lot of death and destruction going on in there. Some turkey's going to stick their hand in there, and Norwood's going to have some legal action. So it's one of those things where I think Norwood knows it's an issue, and they say, hey, don't modify that. But guess what? You're going to modify it. And if you get hurt, Norwin told you, don't modify that. So that hopefully helps remove some liability on their part. Again, I'm not an official spokesperson for them. So I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not putting words in their mouth. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge issue to take this off and clear it out. It's a good time to inspect, maybe double check to make sure you've greased lately. Yada, 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 you know, all the good maintenance stuff that we're all supposed to be doing to make our products last longer. I'm also letting the, in this video, I'm letting the camera run a little bit longer in between what I consider important parts and me just obviously doing things. But um, I have been accused a little bit of cutting too much out. People want to see the operation of the mill, but they also, especially when I'm doing a review, make sure I'm not editing out things I'm having issues with. So I thought, well, this may be a little boring, may make the video a little longer. Um, again, because I can't stop talking at times. But I'm going to try to show more of this stuff um, as I do this review so you guys can see exactly what I'm working with. So I'm going to back the carriage back up. One thing I've noticed with this carriage and this new cabling system, I say it's new, it's new to me. Obviously this is, I'm comparing 2018 technology to 2001, 2000. I don't even remember when I got my Lubbermate 2000. Um, but it used to have a big garage door spring. Kind of like if you, you know, if you got in your, your garage, you have your garage door, has that big horizontal spring over top of your door. That's what used to um, provide resistance to, to make this easier to, uh, to raise and lower. They've done away with that now. They just have a simple cable system, and I thought, ooh, that's not going to be as good. I, I, I think that's going to be an issue, but it's actually proven to be better. With the garage door and the, the old way you used to dog it down to keep it from moving, just what I did there, when I'd back up, I'd always have to double check to make sure that that carriage hadn't settled a little bit in the time of me plinking around with something or doing whatever, because if I back up, I could hit my log with the back of my blade and obviously damage my blade or knock it off. Or, obviously, it would settle halfway through a cut and I'd start to get a, a drop. So, really, really happy with this system. It's, it's holding that carriage firm. I've not had any, any settling issues. I mean, obviously, the first cut I did, it settled a little bit because I didn't have the tension right. And there's a tensioning system here. It, go, it explains it well in the book. But, uh, definitely holds the carriage in position a lot better. All right, I know what you're thinking. Hey, Troy, you've already cut the second cut on that log and you didn't include it in the video. So much for showing everything to its uh, entirety, liar. And to that I say, man, you guys are harsh. No, um, <laughs> this is what happens when you live or die by electronic technology that requires batteries. So, unfortunately, since I'm flying Solo Mio today, I did not realize that the batteries in my transmitter had crapped out about three scenes ago so I could either I thought about either including the footage of me really talking about some key points there and then just overdub so it looks like a bad kung fu movie or reshooting so we're going to reshoot obviously I can't put the slab back on the log so that's why we are here where we are okay um, also and the only reason I'm glad it kind of happened because this is the only reason I would have checked it is the uh, sawmill ran out of gas it does require gasoline. So we're going to put some of that in. And then we're going to think as we pour as to what we missed without pouring gas all down the muffler. I don't know uh, if you all in Canada have as many uh, safety foolishness things as we do here in the United States. I know I've got a lot of Canadians that watch this. But... Um, if I'm on a gas can without the stupid safety features on it, it is a real trick. In fact, um, what we've done is taken gas cans, existing gas cans, and you can buy these aftermarket kind of old school nozzles. It, it cracks me up. That's what I love about capitalism. It's somebody comes up with a safety plan or something that screws up a perfectly fine product. 
and you just give it time when somebody else comes up with something else. So here's an aftermarket nozzle that uh, doesn't have all the safety stuff on it. They can't sell it on a gas can because that's against the law, but they can just sell the nozzle and you can obviously do your own. It even comes with a little kit that you can drill your hole in it for your breather. So one other point that I would consider a con, and it's it's kind of tough to say it's a con. Look at all the dirt. Good night. Um, it's hard on blades. Is these uh, these dogs, these log rests. I use the proper name. Again, I'm just comparing it to my Lumbermate 2000 I had 18 years ago. These rests are just simply some round stock with a little little slope piece welded on and a tab here for offset if you wanted to if you got a big funky knot sticking out you could use this to offset it um, not 100% sold on these I think I've mentioned that before and reason why is on my old Lumbermate 2000 the uh, log rests were square channel stock that you couldn't raise and lower them vertically they were on a pivot system that you could just pivot them up and down so you could go vertical or you could go any angle all the way down to what we called bury. We always say bury, bury the rests because you had these little tabs on the bed that would keep your, once you got your log squared, it would keep it from coming off the side. So there were times you don't need the rest. On this, when you're down to where the log is squared, when you have your cant, then you're supposed to uh, drop this in like that and there's enough of a tab to catch that to keep it from pushing off. Again, not a... Not 100% sold on. I really can't say why. It's not like I've run into anything there where I've said, "Oh man, if I had my old log rests, I could have done that much easier or better." It just, it's just you know something that's not familiar to me, and I, I'm not as keen on it. <clears throat> now, as far as the actual clamping the dog system on this side, it's the exact same as it has always been. So uh, I'm fine with it. I wish I had two of them because on my old mill, that's what we had. We had two in place. You guys probably aren't seeing that. So I'm gonna swing the camera around. <clears throat> so it's just a uh, simple screw mechanism here. So you can see there's some square stock, solid square stock. Has some square stock welded, turned at an angle, hole drilled through it. This threaded cam, this threaded screw comes through, just dogs down. It's just a pointy end there, welded handle turn. Um, square stock comes into a hollow square channel. Uh, this slides back and forth on the pipe. You can dog this down, but I found that you really don't have to as long as you've got the offset. So instead of trying to come straight up vertically and dog, come out at an angle and you can just get that foul. As you can see there's a gap there. No gap there, it's kind of fouled in there. And it holds really well. This, this log is very secure. So that system's the same, no big deal there. We can get her to start again on an easy pull here. Here's a good example. <clears throat> Step back from the uh, engine a little bit. So you hear that rattle. I've had I've had people complain, say, "Man, that thing rattles like crazy." Rattle means uh, metal fatigue, metal wear, blah blah blah. That's a problem. Well, really, the only rattle I have on this machine is what you're hearing, is the handle. So this handle is just made to be on there loose so obviously as I'm turning it I don't have to it, it turns in my hand I don't have to slide my hand across it so while that's a little annoying it's not a structural integrity issue in fact I could probably put a little rubber gasket on there or an extra washer and take that out I can tighten it down more but it, it would take some of the, the nice rotation out of it so while that sound is a little annoying it's not affecting the wear and tear it's not it's not affecting the integrity of the machine
One other issue I want to point out, and, and this is an easy fix, I believe, but it shouldn't have to be. Listen, when I start this, when I engage my throttle lever here, this arm right here, when I engage that, listen how the throttle comes up to a certain RPM, and then I have to take it higher manually. Same here. Here how it's running at a certain RPM. Blade still spinning. Manually moving that throttle back. Now, I know a lot of you guys are screaming at the computer screen or your mobile device or whatever electronic device you watch this on. Saying, dummy, that's the throttle spring. And I say, yes, you're right. About the spring, not the dummy part. And I know Norwood offers different motors, different engines for this, so that may be why there's some variation, but it kind of just bugs me that as well engineered as this thing is, you can't gauge the throttle spring, right? That throttle spring is just too light. It's just not heavy enough to do what it needs to do. And granted, I've, there's some additional tweaks I can make to the cable, but uh, it shouldn't be that difficult, and it should it should be able to go full throttle and obviously back off. So a little bit of an issue there. Again, not a barn burner. This may be the longest it's ever taken me to mill a look. <laughs> Bit of punk in that log there. Yeah, that's gonna be a little bit of an issue. I saw that on the end, but I didn't think we were high we were high enough on a tree not to have that. But oh well, such is life. Flip this over so I can get some of this wane off the other side. Since we're cutting two by sixes. Now I'm going to drop these log rests down as I mentioned before. I don't think you can really see that, but basically what I'm doing is turning the handle, turning this 180 degrees. 
dropping it down in there and that little tab is holding it we will show this because here's another little swing and a miss for norwood i believe okay so i've got the log squared to where i really don't have to dog it down see those little tabs there on the rest they're holding that cant as long as I don't have any weighing, obviously if this log, this part of the log was down there, then it could slide over it. So I got these little tabs holding it in place. And there's a little accessory that was called the quick cam that I thought was pretty, pretty neat. It looked sexy, looked like it would really make some things work well. And it's right here, and it was like a $30 add-on. But this little guy is like just a little quick quick dog device here so you kind of line it up there it's going to bite into the cant and as you push this down it's going to lock down well I've yet to get that thing to hold it falls off as soon as I run the mill it'll fall off nor would even suggested hey make sure that this horizontal pipe doesn't have any slop in it and I've put wedges down in there I've shimmed it so there's no slop at all in that but this thing I'm going to set the camera here and you guys watch I can set this up so it'll be seen. Watch that turkey there. Tell me what you think. That made a liar out of me, didn't it? Still there. We'll see if it falls on the second pass. Alright, so now we're going to five and a half. So I can turn this guy sideways and get a two by six out of him. So you can see that just fell off. Again, not a huge, not a huge support there. It's really not helping me much. So I believe those things were, um, I think that thing was $35, $40. So not a huge loss, but I don't like it. Hmm. Got what I was doing there for a second. That goes there. Turn this guy over this way. Okay, another feature I really like on this mill is the updated log scale. Um, on the old, my old lumber mate, it was actually just on Velcro and you would move it when you needed to, so I found myself not really using it. But right here is a perfect example. So I've got my cant squared, actually rectangled if you want to be particular, but it's five and a half inches wide and seven and a half inches tall. So I'm cutting two by sixes, so obviously I'm just going to take my thicknesses out of that. Bang, bang, bang. So I'm going to be doing roughly an inch and a half. So what I can do is I can just use the regular <coughs> measurement scale here. You can see where it's my red line is set at seven and a half. So I could go to six, then four and a half, and then three, blah, blah, blah. 
But what I could do, that doesn't take into consideration the curve of my blade, but I can use this scale, this blue, and I can set the scale at a six. So there's my closest six, and that stands for six quarters since I'm cutting two bys, so that are inch and a half. So it's a six quarter scale, and that takes into consideration actually the curve of my blade. So I can do this with one hand. So yeah, so now I want to look at the blue line. So the blue line, a little high. Have to do with one hand. All right. So that scale sit at six quarters. So each time I drop, I'm just going to go to six, to six, to six, to six on down the line, and that'll give me the dimensions that I want. So I really like that. That's a great improvement from what they used to have. I'm pushing my luck with this blade. This is the fourth log I've run this blade on. You can kind of hear it dogging down a little bit there. Or bogging down, not dogging down. So we'll drop to our next six. Turn on the water. My uh, sawdust chute is clogged up again already. We're going to my next six here. putting my 2x6s on my rick pile over here of other 2x6s we did last week. Since I've got my extra board here, now that height should be about, yeah, it's about four and a quarter. I'm going to come back here. And again, since I got my scale set, I'm not really losing anything, not losing my place, but I'm going to go back up to five and a half on my red line. Stand this guy up. Dog him down. And now we're going to cut him so we can get a two by six out of him. Here's a sticker board. 
two by six, a little bit of Wayne. <laughs> One of you guys commented the other day on my video talking about how small a log can you mill. And he said, turn it into a drinking game. Every time Troy says Wayne, take a drink. So evidently I say Wayne a lot. Wayne, 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 Wayne. Not going to be responsible though for your drunken disorderly conduct if you are indeed playing a drunken drinking game. Okay, so now we go back to our six scale. Take the board off first. Again, this no editing thing is going to make me look dumber than I. <laughs> so it makes me look dumber than I am, but I guess it's actually how dumb I really am. I was going to try to do that another pass, and not take the board off. You don't necessarily have to take the board off every single time. This should be our last six. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to half that. So I'm going to let that water drain because, believe it or not, we still have a chance of freezing around here. Finish my boards. Some of you had asked, too, about the uh, water tank. The water tank is, uh, I think it's about a four gallon, maybe less, maybe three and a half gallon. But it, uh, it does all right. Obviously, it holds water. <laughs> it has a valve on it so you can drain uh, or so you can... Turn the water on and off. If you're doing anything slick or sticky, sappy like pine, they suggest putting some soap in it. So again, I took you guys through step by step, <laughs> step by step, milling the logs so you could see real time what it takes, trying to do the review there. I hope you guys found this interesting. Some other issues real quick that we'll talk about, some pros and cons. Again, all in all, I, I definitely give this mill a thumbs up. I, I like using it. It's a great mill. It's it's not the HD, but it's also uh, affordable. I mean, like as I mentioned before, you could start out about five grand with this brand new. Uh, some of the upgrades took me up to about seven, but uh, very affordable, very good quality mill. One issue that I have is, and again, I, this is where I'd love to ask Norwood. Okay, what were y'all thinking here? So look at this hardware. Are we still recording? Yes. So look at this hardware. So you can see nice galvanized stuff, powder coated everything. Um, even galvanized bolts. The bolt up here exposed. I can get my camera show. Yeah, exposed. Uh, really looking good. But the trailer package, the trailer package, the main support bolts for the trailer package, they came and they were just the black. Um, cannot remember the name of the coating, but it's 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 basically like an indoor coating, an anodized or or whatever. It's just a black, just a black bolt. It's not it's not made to be weathered at all. And I, I don't understand why they would use those those bolts. Why didn't they do a galvanized bolt there? Or even a grade eight bolt that you'd have uh, for your tractor. So those things are rusted up. I mean they rusted up the very first 
first week. Again, it's surface rust. It could be just like a steel I-beam. Those are made to just discolor like that and, and be okay. I don't know. Some of you guys that are metalsmiths, you may know that a lot better than I do. But I thought that was kind of odd. But then, of course, the, the question is, well, Troy, do you keep your mill covered? Well, no, you don't see a you don't see a structure over top of it yet. Ironically, I need to mill one. But I'm not sure this is going to be the permanent place I want this. I have, at times, covered up the carriage with a tarp. You can buy a tarp. I think Norwood makes a custom fit one. It's a couple hundred bucks. They're a little proud of that. Um, but obviously it fits snugly over this and fits fine. The problem I've discovered with our valley, this is the, the center part of our valley, so wind comes down here pretty good. With a tarp on this thing, it becomes a sail. And uh, I've, uh, I've been up at the house when the wind was blowing and heard something slam. I'm like, my goodness, what is that? And come down and the carriage had, had just started blowing. Man, it was just rocking down through here. And it was slamming into these tabs to the point that it actually bent this tab. So I took the tarp off of it. And a hateful sucker, when we have 20, 30 mile an hour winds, it still does that. Now there's a transport lock that I can, I can use. I have it up at the house. And it's if I was going to trailer this, I can, I can put this mechanism on here and it, it locks this carriage in place. So I may have to start doing that when I'm done with it to keep it from blowing back and forth. Because man, I don't, obviously don't want that tab being broken and that thing flying off of there. You, you talk about a pain in the butt. If this thing jumps the tracks, then that's going to be a real issue. There's a tab on the other end, so when it blows that way, of course, it stopped. But... So that's why I don't have a cover on it as much, but obviously that's costing me uh, some, some wear and tear. Uh, this plastic is supposed to be UV protected. My, I've noticed my uh, emergency stop button is not the bright red it used to be. I mean, obviously little things like that uh, fading, that'll eventually become brittle. So um, some of these exposure issues are my own because I don't have it under cover. But once I do, then, then some of that'll get taken care of. Okay, so... Um, I had to grab my notes, so I made sure I had everything. I'm going to clean my dust port out again. There's <clears throat> a couple things. Uh, one more. There's a couple more things I want to go over real quick. Um, one that's, that's a con is, is their assembly process. It comes with a, a very detailed manual. And that manual, by and by, is, is pretty accurate. But you can kind of tell where they've upgraded their technology on their equipment and their text manuals haven't caught up and i've discovered that there were some things that says hey this is how you do that and i'm like no you can't do that there's no way in the world this 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 rig isn't configured for that to happen and when i called uh, norwood they're like oh yeah our bad we uh, we've upgraded that we're in the middle of an engineering upgrade so we haven't upgraded our documents so if you're buying a mill and you run into some of those things tech support did a great job of helping it's just a little frustrating because I like to work on this thing on the weekends when I put it together. And obviously they don't have 24 seven tech support. It's weekday tech support. So I would have to wait till Monday to get that issue resolved. Another thing I'd like, oh, um, along those same lines. So one point in particular is the alignment of these wheels. So obviously there are these big wheels that your blade hangs out on. Go around here and take this one off. He's probably tired of watching me walk around this hateful thing. So these large wheels, drive wheels, of course, is what the belt rides on. Just like a movie projector kind of concept. But these wheels have to be in alignment to one another. There's these large axles that go back into this carriage, and those wheels spin on those axles, of course. So for things to work smoothly, for the blade to stay on those wheels, those two wheels, again, if I took them off here and brought them up so you can see them, yeah, they can't run in and out like a toe, like you'd have toe in or toe out on the front of your car. These wheels have to run true to one another. If this one's bent out, then eventually the blade's going to work itself to the back and come off. If this one's bent forward, same, same deal. You're going to have it run off. So the book talks about, well, what you do, you can, um, you can obviously stick a blade on there and just turn it by hand to see if it comes off. I did that, but you got to have your tension tensioned well to, to make sure it's tracking. And when I was first testing it, I didn't realize how far out of alignment this wheel was, and this blade jumped. And you can see in this picture here, when you're just turning it by hand and the blade jumps, they still have some bite to it. I bled like a stuck pig there. So I really don't like that alignment process. On my old Lumbermate, there was a cutaway here. And I could literally take my six foot level, stick it on there, or just a straight piece of metal, and something that was true, and I could really get that lined up nicely. 
in the manual they suggest, well, if you don't want to just turn and see it lined up, use the string test. Let uh, turn it ma manually and have a piece of string that gets underneath your belt so it pinches. And from like the 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock position, you can get it pinched in there and you can see if it's true. Well, that would work great if it wasn't for the fact that these plastic covers have this divider here. String is not going to pass through. I searched this to see, okay, is there a pass through? Is there a notch out? Even considered cutting a notch. I thought, well, I don't want to destroy the integrity of that wall. It's there for a reason. So that's where the manual hasn't caught up with their latest accessories. These covers, um, I don't know if I've shown in some of these close-up shots, but these covers are a little damaged, and that's not because of the covers being poorly made. The damage is because of the blade jumping. You come over there closer so y'all can see that. One of the cons, I would say, in their engineering, these, these axles are aligned by, uh, there's a small uh, bolt in here that you turn, and it, it pushes that rear of that axle either you know, this way or allows it to come this way because there's resistance on it. So it pushes it in or allows it to come out. And of course that affects the angle on that wheel. So those adjustments were made. I had that dialed in perfectly when, uh, when I first got it set up. Ran the mill for about three months and then one day came down and was running it. And man, this thing would be just started into a log, jump. So wow, okay, the blade's gone dull. That, that, went, that went fast. Put a new blade on it, bang, jumped. Put it back on, ran it for a bit, but without even engaging a log, ran it, it jumped, jumped, jumped. So I'm like, okay, something's definitely wrong here. Check everything out. And I thought, well, my goodness, it has to be out of alignment. Again, since I can't do the string test or I can't do my level test, I had to, I think I had to manually turn it and it kept jumping. So it was kind of tough to figure out until I just started messing with the alignment. I got it dialed back into alignment and then, man, it's, it's fine. So vibration, uh, just tension, whatever it may be, causes, a, causes that alignment to kind of loosen up. So I'm curious to see, um, as I continue to use it, if it's going to continue to go out of alignment. And so that may, may be a regular adjustment that has to be done. Again, that wouldn't be a big deal if I had a clean alignment way to do it. Again, I can't use the string, I can't use the level, I just have to manually turn it and watch to see if that blade's going to advance forward or backward. I don't like that. I wish Norwood would do something about that. Um, in full disclosure, I haven't contacted them about it. I can't imagine I'm the only one dealing with that. Uh, so I haven't directly reached out to them to say, hey, what's your fix for this? So, but the thing I do like is when the blade does jump, because the blade will jump. Even when you've got it aligned well, the blade can jump sometimes if your blade is dull and you're pushing hard or you're pushing, you're too anxious and you're going into the cant, uh, you have an issue, or like I've done, you hit metal, that could cause an issue. Well, when the blade jumps on my old lumber mate, everything was metal. So when that blade jumped and it hit into that metal, that blade was trashed. So a jumping blade uh, really, really you tore it up badly. Well, this plastic, you can see some of the bite marks taken out of this. <clears throat> see if this shows in focus. See this looks like braille there. And of course on the inside where it's been reamed out a little bit. And you can see these scars here. The blade jumps and of course goes into this plastic and it doesn't seem to be damaging the blade as badly. So I like that. I like the plastic case. Now granted at some point this case is going to fall apart. I've got a pretty good, uh, got a decent little hole that's come all the way through right here. So there is some, some wear issues there, so you, you just got to give one way or the other. Well, as I mentioned, Norwood stands behind this product, and that's what impressed me the most. If parts showed up incorrectly when I first bought it, if we've had any issues, I've been able to communicate with them well. I get good answers. I get solid answers. I don't, you know, they don't beat around the bush. They cut right to the chase. If it's a mistake they made, they readily admit it, and they rectify it. I have an extra axle. Uh, if you want to know what that's all about, you can watch the old video. Uh, so they really take care of... Uh, of their customers when it comes to those type of issues. So after six months, I'd say yes, thumbs up to this, great mill. Um, I would still endorse it 100%, even though I'm not endorsed by them anymore, or at this time. Uh, but I would say definitely go buy a Norwood mill if you're looking for one, uh, looking for something that's in your price range. Uh, there are more expensive mills out there that you could say, well, they, they have more features, more, uh, uh, more benefits, possibly. But for five grand entry point, this is a great mill. Well, again, guys, I, I hope you're all right with this long video. Uh, a shout out. Um, I can never remember when I walk outside, uh, whoever I'll mention below. I'll, I'll post it below here. But somebody had requested, hey, your mic comes in and out at times. You ought to try clipping it to your hat like somebody else does. So I've got my mic clipped to my hat here, and I appreciate that. I think that's going to work a lot better. And I don't get it caught on too many things. Uh, when it was on my suspenders, 
I'd always get it caught on stuff. So um, I think this will work out. So I appreciate that. All right. Take care, everybody.